This is our second lesson for graphing quadratic equations. The first one we just went over the basic table and how to use a table to graph a quadratic equation. We introduced some of the basic concepts. Now we're going to take some of those concepts and we're going to apply them and be able to use them with any quadratic equation. Now we're going to be looking to start with this graph right here which is the graph of y equals x squared plus 6x plus 5. We're going to talk about the basic terms and also how we can use the equation to get those. Now this equation is in standard form. Standard form for a quadratic equation is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now you'll notice there's no number in front of the x squared. There's no leading coefficient. So a in this case would be 1. b would be 6. And c is always the constant that's at the end, which is 5. It is standard form, decreasing exponents. And this is the general format. Now let's look at a couple of the points from our graph. You may recall back from when we did linear graphs that the x-intercepts, which are these two points right here, are always the values of x when y is equal to 0. Okay, so let's look at the x-intercepts for a minute. And we know that the x-intercepts are the value of x when y equals 0. And so in order to find those x-intercepts, all I need to do is make y in my equation equal to 0. So I'm going to rewrite my equation. 0 equals x squared plus 6x plus 5. Now you know how to solve this because we just did that in chapter 9. We're going to factor. So since this is a trinomial, I'll break it up into my two sets of parentheses. Put the x's at the front. Now I need two numbers that multiply to give me 5 and add to give me 6. So that'll be plus 5 and plus 1. And now I can, since I have two things that multiply together to give me 0, then one of those two has to be 0. So x plus 5 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. And I solve both of those. And I've got x equals negative 5. And I've got x equals negative 1. And you'll notice that negative 5 and negative 1 are my two x-intercepts. Pretty cool, huh? All right, let's take a minute and let's look at the y-intercept. Now, the y-intercept, hopefully you remember, uh, maybe now you will, that the y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. And so it's really easy to get the y-intercept of a quadratic from standard form because all you have to do is make x 0. So 0 squared plus 6 times 0 plus 5. And you'll notice that these two terms will both be 0, which means that y equals 5. And you'll see that my y-intercept there is 5. Pretty cool, huh? Now the last thing we're going to look for is we're going to talk about the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Now we know that the vertex is right here and we know that the axis of symmetry is a straight line that goes through that point because the axis of symmetry will be a mirror. Now you should notice that this x-intercept is two spaces over so is the other x-intercept. Because it's an exact mirror, everything on each side is the same. At my y-intercept here, that's three spaces over. So one, two, three. That would be another point on my graph, another three spaces over, right? So how do we get the vertex? Well, the vertex is actually pretty easy if we have standard form. Okay, The vertex... will be found. First we're going to find the x value. Now the x value is always negative b over 2a. Now where do those negative b and a come from? Well they come from standard form. There's my a, there's my b. Okay, And so that will be at negative 
b, which was 6, so negative 6 over 2 times a. Now, a in this case was 1, right? So that means my x value should be at negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3. And you'll see at negative 1, 2, 3, that's where my vertex is. Now, how do I get the y value when I don't have the graph? Well, I just plug it into my equation. And so I say the y value is equal to negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 5. So negative 3 squared is 9. 6 times negative 3 is minus 18. And then add the 5. And that ends up giving me negative 4. And so my vertex is at negative 3, comma 4. Now that's a point, so it should be in parentheses. And you'll notice 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. That is my vertex. The axis of symmetry is always found going straight through the vertex. And it's a vertical line, which means it's an x equal equation. And so our axis of symmetry will always say axis of symmetry at, and then we'll just write an equation, x equals negative 3, because that's the equation for this yellow line that runs straight up and down through the center of my, my graph. And that's basically all the concepts and ideas that you will need in order to be able to graph a quadratic graph. One thing that you may notice is that the vertex is halfway in between the x-intercepts. So if you start by finding the x-intercepts, you can also get the x value of the vertex just by averaging those. This one was negative 1, that one was negative 5. Negative 1 plus negative 5 is negative 6 divided by 2. Average them should give you the center, which will again be the x value of your vertex. So that may be something that you find helpful later on. So I'm going to end this video and go on to part two.